Okay, at-home scientists, we're going to put a little device together today so that you can get the mass of some different materials. So this isn't going to look the same for everybody, but I'm giving you a picture of the things that I used when I did my process here. So these are just regular old measuring cups that have some markings on them so that I can understand the volume of water. This is a tape measure for making measurements. I got some lightweight plastic cups, things that if they fell over, I wouldn't be too worried about it breaking. But also it's a little bit of a benefit that these are light cups here. And they're identical, that's pretty important. This is gonna be my lever. Uh, you are really just looking for something that is reasonably long. This is over a foot, but less than two feet. You want it to be stiff. It's better if it's not super heavy. This is going to be my fulcrum. That's the pivot point uh, that we're going to put underneath the lever so that this thing can teeter-totter back and forth. Notice I have this pretty small. Uh, this is the type of pin that actually has little ridges so it won't roll around too easily. Uh, but I, I don't want it to be very, very tall. I, I, I don't want this to ever move much beyond horizontal, even as it teeter-totters back and forth. I have a, a Sharpie here so that I can make some markings on things. And this was my random object that I'm using so that I could get some, uh, some sort of mass for that object. So here's the principle that we're going to be after. I know I have a lot of information on this slide, but we're going to use this idea that density uh, is mass divided by volume. And so if you ever need to pause and look at this equation, uh, feel free to do that so that you always have that sitting there. We're going to be really interested in these units over here. So the units for density are going to be grams per centimeter cubed or it turns out that a centimeter cubed is the same thing as a milliliter. They have the same amount of volume. And so this is probably our most direct link that we're going to be interested in. The density of water in grams per milliliter happens to be one, uh, at least close enough to one for our purposes today. So this means that one milliliter of water has a mass of one gram, and that's going to be very useful for us. Okay. So hold that thought and let me show you how I put together my little device. I want you to do this also. So the first thing I did is I put my two cups on the end of my lever here. And then I used my Sharpie to put little markings around it. So I kind of knew exactly where those things were supposed to be. One of these cups is going to hold my, my thing that I'm trying to get the mass of. In my case, it was a little plug-in timer that I randomly found in a, in a drawer. And then the other cup is going to hold some volume of water that we will be able to measure. And if we set this up correctly, the mass of the water over in this cup is going to be equal to the mass of my little device that I'm trying to, to measure here. All right, so uh, there's that step. Then what I did is I put some markings on what I thought was the center of my lever here. And I put those off to the side. So in my case, this was just under 15 inches, so I was trying to go a little bit under seven and a half inches here. And I'm just putting some marks so I knew where the things needed to go. Okay, and then I'm grabbing my fulcrum. Again, I think it was kind of handy that this wasn't a totally cylindrical pen, uh, just so that I didn't have to worry about it rolling away too much. And so I'm going to put my fulcrum right underneath this marking here. But then what I noticed when I did that, and I wasn't expecting this, that if I wanted both sides to not be touching the table, I actually had to move my pin and just squeeze it over to the side a little bit. So my pin is not actually in the very, very center anymore, which I wasn't expecting. What that means is that this side is a little bit more dense than this side of the wood. So I think we can get around this, though. What I did is I put in the dotted line, C-O-M is center of mass. So I put in the little dotted lines where I thought the actual center of mass was for my lever. So, and you can see here, 
that that center of mass is not the actual center of my lever. But I, I think this is more important. So we are going to put the fulcrum at the center of mass. But the physics of all of this is that however far I am from here to here, where my cup is going to be, I need to have the same distance from here to this cup over here. So you can see that I refreshed uh, the location for where my other cup is going to need to sit. So I'm going to put one cup right here, like before, and then my other cup is actually going to go, go up more towards this dotted line uh, so that I have the same distance from the center of mass in both directions here. All right, so here's my setup now. You can see that this cup is actually moved in a little bit more um, than where my original marking was. But now, I don't know if you can tell from the picture, but this thing is not touching the table on either side here, which is the goal. Okay, so then I plopped in my little device that I'm gonna try to get the mass of, and I'm just making sure nothing's moving around. This is actually touching over here now. That's the heavier side. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start pouring some water into this cup. I'm pouring very slowly and very carefully until I get enough weight over here on this cup from the water so that it lifts up the other side. And that took me a little bit. I had to play around with it. I had to pour some water in, then I put in too much on accident. I had to take a little water out. So just play with it until you can get that nice and balanced. Then I had all this extra water that I was using to pour from, but if you look over here, I have my numbers that I was gonna use. These happen to be in milliliters over there, and that's what I wanted to understand my water measurement. So I went and I dumped all this water out so that it was back to no water, and then I took the water that was in here and I dumped it into this thing so that I could get a fresh water measurement for how much was actually in the cup. So when I did that, and I did my best to take a little photograph here from the side, I didn't do a great job with the photograph. The water line is basically the bottom edge of this thicker band that you can see here. So here was 50 milliliters. There's 100 milliliters. Uh, as a chemist, I want to reinforce that you shouldn't try to... to get too detailed with what you think this is going to be. Uh, but given that we're just trying to make this work to the best of our ability, I was calling this between 75, right where my cursor is, between 75 and 80 uh, is what I thought it was. Um, and I think that's just around as good as I was going to get there. So I think what that means, let's just pick the number 75. It actually ended up being closer to 80, so maybe I'll pick 80, though I only know that because I weighed the thing later. Uh, but if I think it's 80 milliliters, remember from up front, one gram is equal to one milliliter. So now I think it's 80 grams of mass. And then I happen to have a little kitchen scale at home. And I don't even know how accurate my kitchen scale is, but I popped this thing onto my kitchen scale and it's reading in grams right now. And it says it's 83 grams. So I thought that was pretty good given uh, we're just using some stuff from home here. So I'm going to have all of you try to make your own version of this. And just remember, not everyone's is going to look identical. You're going to have to get a little bit creative, but I think it'll be fun.